What's up guys, welcome to this review of The Book of Boba Fett. Is it season one? Is it something else? Who knows? Either way, it's The Book of Boba Fett, the first season perhaps. And this is the latest Star Wars TV show. I am going to be going into full spoilers in this review, so just be warned about that. But first, I am going to go into just my nutshell, top view thoughts of it. No spoilers, no revelations. This show, The Book of Boba Fett, is has two storylines going on. It's a continuation of the events of The Mandalorian, where Boba Fett is now trying to become a crime lord and take over from Bib Fortuna and Jabba the Hutt. The other time, it's also showing some flashbacks of how he survived the events of Return of the Jedi, how he got out of the Sarlacc pit, and what happened between that and the events of The Mandalorian. So, two narrative storyline threads and what did I think of this show overall? It's enjoyable. It is fun at times. It's got some decent action scenes and some good visual effects and some not so good visual effects. It's a real mixed bag of things and I did like it as a Star Wars fan, but take away the Star Wars fan in me, this is not a good show. It, it just isn't, it can't be. There are far too many problems with this show. There are very bad things in this show. Very Some things in this show that happens that are not good for any TV show and it's weird. It's weird to get a TV show of this scale and scope and budget and quality that's so problematic at the same time. It's unusual and a lot of the problems relate to how the story unfolds, how the story is told, the structure of the show, and hell, even the title of the show. What is this show? Is it a limited series? Is it a continuation of The Mandalorian? Is it just another Star Wars story? We really don't know. The title suggests one thing, but then certain episodes of this suggest another. So it's weird. And then there's also the problems with depiction of certain characters. We'll get into all of that in just a moment. That is my spoiler free thoughts on the Book of Boba Fett. I enjoyed it, I like it, I'm a Star Wars fan though, so of course I'm going to enjoy it and like it to some extent. I have some issues with certain things, but otherwise, very fun and enjoyable at times. Not a good show though. Now though, to dive into the story and some deeper elements and big spoiler elements. So if you haven't seen the Book of Boba Fett, go and watch it, or not, depending on what you think of that initial view, and yeah, spoilers now. So the story, very problematic. Two storyline threads, there's the one set in like the Mandalorian era, just after Mandalorian season two, there's the one set after Return of the Jedi. They don't always mix well, they don't always get the balance right. It feels like some of these elements were filmed out of order and then edited in a different order. It feels like maybe it was going to be told in a chronological order but then they decided no we'll use flashbacks instead and I'm not sure if I like that. I feel like it might have been beneficial to have certain elements of the later episodes happen earlier in the season and then certain elements of the flashbacks be fleshed out a bit more. So the whole flashback storyline is basically showing Boba Fett's time with the Tuscans and it's all very interesting stuff. I think this show does a really good job of fleshing out the Tuscans and Tatooine, the location, the planet as a whole. I think this show does more for Tatooine than any Star Wars property so far. The fact that we now have a really good idea of who runs Tatooine, what's going on on Tatooine besides just like Luke Skywalker and his farm and stuff like that. So yeah, I love the depiction of Tatooine in this show, although I am getting tired of seeing Tatooine. The flashback storyline it's interesting to begin with, but then all of a sudden that's meant to be the trigger point for Boba Fett. That's meant to be the point where he goes from being the badass bounty hunter we think he is, keyword there being think, to what he ends up being in The Mandalorian and in the rest of this show. The problem is that the flashback storyline is a little rushed, particularly in the, the way in which it concludes, in that one minute Boba Fett's off on an adventure, then he comes back and all the Tuscans are dead. Right, somewhat emotional stuff, but it would have been better if we actually, I don't know, saw some of that, or if there was some sort of build up to it. We later find out what killed the Tuskins, it's hinted that a certain bounty hunter might have done it, 
And it would have been really cool if that certain bounty hunter had done it. It would have been really cool if that certain bounty hunter, Cad Bane, I'll just say his name, was introduced far earlier in the season and then built him up as the big bad guy of the season instead of being introduced in the last two episodes and then just being killed off. So, that flashback storyline I feel like should have been a little bigger, a little bit more significant and I think it should have been told in chronological order. It should have also been paced out a bit better if you were going to have it as flashbacks. Instead of having an introduction and then the rest of the episode as a flashback, it should have been in smaller chunks, a bit more like Lost or Yellow Jackets recently. Instead of just a whole episode of a flashback with a little brief thing to establish the flashback. The transitions into the flashback as well, where it goes like a green tint, not that good, doesn't look great. But yeah, that's where the main structural issues come from, at least in the first half of the season, because by the second half of the season, they're gone completely, no more flashbacks. But it's also the case of these flashbacks are supposed to establish Boba Fett's motivation. They're supposed to establish his goal and purpose and reason for doing everything he does. And it doesn't do that. So instead of just like, oh, Boba Fett sees bad things happening to these people. And all of a sudden, oh, he wants to be a good guy. It's like, right, you need to explain that a bit more. Why does he want to do this? Why does he want to be a crime lord? Why does he no longer want to be a bounty hunter? None of this is explained. And it's really frustrating because if I don't understand what, why Boba Fett's doing what he's doing, why should I care about what he's doing? He keeps saying he wants to be a crime lord, he keeps saying he's put his past behind him, he's no longer a bounty hunter. But there's no explanation whatsoever and it's weird. Because last we saw him, he was a bounty hunter, he was a badass bounty hunter as far as we were aware. And now all of a sudden he's this honourable crime lord who's barely wears his mask anymore for some reason, or his helmet rather and it's just not explained very well at all. But yeah, these flashbacks do disrupt the pacing. They are interesting, but at the end of the day, I feel like these flashbacks were originally designed to be told in chronological order rather than featured as flashbacks. I could be wrong, but that's the vibe that I get, especially since there aren't any flashbacks later on in the season. But some of these earlier episodes, they do have some really good moments. There's a train heist sequence, which I think is really well done. There's a scene where Boba Fett and Fennec Shan team up to infiltrate Jabba's palace and take back the Slave One. It's not called the Slave One now apparently but hey it, it's always going to be the Slave One and that's a really cool episode and that's the one that really like bridges the gap between Return of the Jedi and the Mandalorian. So yeah there are some cool episodes some cool moments in those early episodes but it is very slow going. They're doing a really slow build up of the storyline and establishing what this show is about and that's again building into the pacing issues of this show and that this show is in no hurry to do anything and it focuses so much on Boba Fett's perspective even though we don't really understand his perspective that everyone else that he's facing off against the Pikes in particular they're just mindless bad guys as far as we're aware they do not do a good job of establishing the villains of this show and there are hints at like a bigger villain Personally, I thought it was hinting at Kira as the big villain. Kira played by Amelia Clark in Solo. And it still could be. That storyline is still a very good possibility for maybe The Mandalorian Season 3 or Book of Boba Fett Season 2 if we get that. I don't know what their plan is yet. But yeah, it feels like they were constantly holding something back for the sake of surprise that then never happened. And yeah. So the villains are a weak spot here because they just don't get established at all. In fact, the villains aren't really fully introduced until the final few episodes. And again, they're just mindless, fish-eyed bad guys. Then the last few episodes come along and this is where we get a big shift in what this show is. Because it stops being the book of Boba Fett. Hell, Boba Fett is absent for like two episodes and I think in one of the episodes he only has like 30 seconds of screen time. It's weird. The title character of this show, a show all about him, and he's barely in the last few episodes. So much so that the last few episodes are just episodes of The Mandalorian. And they're really good episodes on The Mandalorian, they're really great episodes of Star Wars TV. One of which, which has a bunch of surprises, a bunch of big name cameos like Luke Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano and R2-D2, is one of the best Star Wars things I've seen in years. And it's stuck in the middle of this show 
for reasons that aren't entirely clear or necessary. Why is half of this show actually part of a different show? It's bizarre. It's really, really bizarre. And this is where the problem starts with this show in that the show has an identity crisis. It doesn't know what it is. It doesn't know what it wants to be. And yeah. So regardless of how good these episodes are, they actually damage everything that came before because they disrupt the momentum of the show and then they take away the main character and then the final episode returns to being a show about Boba Fett. And yeah, so I love these episodes, but they should not be here. They just shouldn't. And it leaves the question of, if this was the original plan, why call it the Book of Boba Fett? Why not just call it The Mandalorian Season 3? Technically speaking, Boba Fett is Mandalorian, so it could have worked. Or called The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett. Or The Mandalorian, Boba Fett. Or Boba Fett, The Mandalorian, whatever the hell you want to call it. Just don't call it The Book of Boba Fett and then actually secretly make it a continuation of The Mandalorian. Because that's misleading and inaccurate. And it's almost as if Robert Rodriguez came in while Dave Filoni and John Favreau were on holiday or on vacation, if you're American. But then once John Favreau and Dave Filoni came back off their vacation or holiday, they pivoted what this show was. It's weird. Yeah, and it, it, I enjoyed it, I liked it, but it doesn't make for a good show. But those last few episodes do have some of the best Star Wars stuff I've seen in years. They have some really cool fan service -y moments. But again, maybe too much fan service -y? At the end of the day, you want to be surprised by things, but if you can predict that Boba Fett's going to end up riding the Ranko, which I did predict, then, you know, at a certain point you kind of think, right, they're just trying to please the fans for the sake of pleasing the fans. Why not come up with something a bit more original? And of course, the big problem with these last few episodes is the fact that Boba Fett, the main character, is relegated to being a side character again. So let's talk about the characters. Boba Fett. A lot of people are going to have a problem with Boba Fett's depiction here. Tamura Morrison playing Boba Fett, this is technically the first time he's actually played Boba Fett outside of a voice role in the re-release in 2004 of uh, Attack of, of uh, Empire Strikes Back. So this is the first time in live action that Tamura Morrison has actually played Boba Fett and I think the performance of Tamura Morrison is actually pretty good. The problem is that a lot of people are going into this show with a certain idea of who or what Boba Fett is. A lot of people think of him as this badass bounty hunter. He's cold, he's emotionless, he, he's cool, he just kind of stands in the background and does more like gestures and nods and stuff like that rather than speaking. And he doesn't remove his helmet. Boba Fett is a character that was only in like I think six or seven minutes of the original trilogy movies. He's not a major character by any means, but people notice him and they latched onto him. And I think that gave a lot of people a certain idea of what they wanted from Boba Fett. Only there was nothing actually definitively saying that is what Boba Fett was. There's nothing in the Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi beyond the way that he looks saying that Boba Fett is a badass bounty hunter. There's stuff in the comic books now which does say that, and that's kind of it. So Boba Fett's backstory doesn't really exist, not the backstory you think he has. So Tamura Morrison coming in here playing a more honourable, grounded and heroic Boba Fett is actually, it's not against what the character is, it's just against what you thought the character was. Personally, I would have preferred to have seen a bigger transition. I would have preferred it if he was this badass bounty hunter and we saw the transition of him becoming the more honorable guy. But again, the flashbacks don't really do that. The flashbacks lack certain moments. They needed to be fleshed out a bit more. They needed to really highlight what was it that changed in him? What was it that made him go from that to this? And it's not clear. And again, his motivations are unclear as well. But again, Tamara Morrison does do a good job of what is given. I just feel like there are some key scenes and moments that just aren't shown or given to us. At the same time though, him not being this badass bounty hunter, him being the main character of his own show and being a little softer around the edges and removing his helmet and being more honourable and wanting to rule as a crime lord where he isn't just killing people because he can, 
at the same time, that's obviously trying to make him more heroic, more likable, because at the end of the day, if he was the Boba Fett of the original trilogy that we thought he was, he would actually be a villain here. And it would be hard to root for him. It would be hard to make him a main character here. You would have to somehow make the villains that he's facing more villainous. And we've already talked about the villains, but they don't really do that. But at the same time, this Boba Fett, a bit of an idiot. He's not very smart. He doesn't know things. In fact, he spends most of this season learning about stuff. And he spends most of this season unguarded, removing his helmet and going into a Bacta tank and somehow Black Crescenton comes in and almost kills him. <laughs> and it's weird. Why is Boba Fett that we know all of a sudden letting himself get attacked like that? Why is he so stupid? Why is he not this strategic mastermind? Of course, again, it goes into the fact that in the original trilogy, none of this was actually established. Again, we don't know who Boba Fett was in the original trilogy beyond the fact that he had this cool armor. So it doesn't necessarily cancel that out. It doesn't necessarily say that, hey, this is we're going against what Boba Fett was, it just says, hey, Boba Fett isn't quite who you thought he was, he isn't quite what you wanted him to be. But also, he's wanting to be this crime lord. Right, I get it. I don't know why, but he wants to be this crime lord. What does he have to offer? Because he doesn't seem to have money. Yeah, he's now running Jabba's palace, but he also doesn't seem to have a staff. All he's got is Fennec Shan, this assassin, and a droid played by Matt Berry initially. Then he brings in a couple of Gamorians, he ends up with Black Crescenton. But like, what's he giving them? Is he paying them? Why doesn't he have a bigger staff? Why doesn't he have like a crime lord's army? Why doesn't he have a gang? He ends up getting the mods involved as well. And yeah, all of these make for interesting characters, but it doesn't look like a gang. It doesn't feel like a gang. It doesn't feel like he's actually legitimately becoming a crime lord. And uh, yeah, it's weird. Again, all of this stuff is something that needs to be fleshed out a bit more and a lot of stuff that just seems like there's stuff missing. Let's talk about Fennec Shandu, played by the great Ming-Na Wen. She is brilliant in everything that she does. She has some really cool moments, she has some really cool action scenes in here, and that's kind of it. She's underutilized in this show. I like Ming-Na Wen a lot, I like Fennec Shand a lot. But I wanted to see more of it. It's not until like the final couple, like the very last episode that we actually see Fennec Shand be Fennec Shand that we want to see her be. But yeah, underutilized, but I do like her. Then Din Djarin and Grogu show up in the last few episodes. Great to see them again. It's interesting now that Din Djarin is way cooler and more interesting than Boba Fett ever was. And of course Grogu, probably the most relatable and likeable puppet to ever exist at this point. Maybe slightly behind Kermit the Frog maybe, I don't know, but yeah. It's, it's bizarre how much emotion and performance they can get out of that puppet. Yeah, it's really interesting stuff. But the problem about bringing the Mandalorian and Grogu in here is that they do detract from the main character. In fact, they end up being the main character in the last few episodes. So. Why would you do that in a show about Boba Fett? Why would you bring in a character who is way more interesting and who gets way more screen time and way more dialogue than Boba Fett does? It's odd that you would just sideline your main character like that. I mentioned Black Crescenton. Not a lot to say here. He is from the comic books, particularly Dr. Aphra, and it's cool to see him here in live action. I think they do a good job at depicting his action scenes. I like the look of him, I like the fact that they are bridging the gap from the comic books and stuff as well. So yeah, really cool to see him. Cat Bane. So Cat Bane, arguably the main villain of this season. Really great to see him in live action. Again, voiced by Corey Burton. The way that he looks is really good. He doesn't quite look how he looks like in the animated version. His face is actually a little more scrunched up, I would say, in this version. But then they do mention how he's getting older, so maybe that's why. And yeah, his teeth and his mouth look a little weird, but that's to do with the prosthetics more than anything else. But yeah, really good to see Cad Bane. I like the depiction of this. I wish he was introduced earlier in the season, and then you could really build him up as the bad guy instead of being introduced the last episode in a huge shocking moment, which was really cool, and then just kill him off in the next one. Yeah. His death makes sense, his death was earned, but it would have been great if it was just built up a bit more and we actually got to see a bit more of it. Ahsoka Tano, not a lot to say here. 
interesting that she knows Luke Skywalker. That's something we didn't know before. So yeah, cool to establish their relationship. And then of course, Luke Skywalker. It's great seeing him. The CGI and special effects they've done to de-age him. I say de-age him, it's a different actor playing him physically. Mark Hamill was there, Mark Hamill was doing the live action performance and then they mixed it in with Mark Hamill and the stunt double and the body double and the, bod the acting double. And then they done the synthesized voice, which is a little mixed, but it's great to see him. The special effects are incredible. I would say this is the best use of CGI to create a human character ever. It's really, really good. And yeah, did he need to be in this show? Did we need to see all the stuff that he's doing? No, Luke Skywalker's story is done. I like seeing Luke Skywalker. I love Mark Hamill, but I don't need to see more of him. And I feel like we're going to see more of him. I feel like they might actually be building up to a full-on show with Luke Skywalker as the main character, or at least one of the main characters. Because why else would they keep doing this? Why else would they keep building on this technology? There's also talks of, will Sebastian Stan ever play Luke Skywalker? I've got mixed feelings on that, but I feel like if Mark Hamill gives his blessing, then sure, we'll go for it. But yeah, great seeing Luke Skywalker. The voice does lack emotion because it's a computer speaking, it's not him speaking properly. And yeah, otherwise, the voice is the only thing they need to get right if they're going to continue doing this. But yeah, great scene. Let's talk about the mods. These were clearly an invention of Robert Rodriguez. He done Elite Battle Angel. He's very heavily involved with like cyberpunk stuff. He likes that sort of stuff. So he brought it into Star Wars and it doesn't quite fit. There is some cyberpunk mod stuff in Star Wars already in the comic books, particularly Dr. Aphra stuff has some of that elements there. There's even another bounty hunter in this universe who gets involved in that. Um, and yeah. The way in which they're all like shiny Vespers and scooters and stuff is a bit odd. It feels really weird seeing that in Tatooine. The chase scene that they're involved in is bad. The actual action that's happening in that chase scene is good, but it's just so slow and clearly limited by the budget. The special effects around it aren't great. But yeah, the mods themselves are underutilized again, I would say. You've got Sophie Thatcher here, who's a big rising star right now because of Yellow Jackets, because of this. I feel like she could be something big in the future, and I feel like they're gonna continue exploring this character and that group in some form or another. But right now, I'm a little uncertain of how well they fit into Star Wars. I do feel it feels like a little too much cyberpunk and less Star Wars. But yeah, let's talk some miscellaneous points. I mentioned the action scenes. Some of them are pretty good. The train sequence, for example, the infiltration of Jabba the Hutt's palace. I love the fact that there's like this General Grievous, like chef. I think that was hilarious. And but then at the same time, some of the action scenes didn't have the budget. The chase scene through Tatooine, like I just mentioned. Then later on, it shows that yeah, they're saving the budget for the Luke Skywalker special effects as well as the Ranko versus the big droids. So. It all works out in the end. The Rancor and the Big Droids, very King Kong-esque stuff going on there. Really cool action scenes, a lot of fan service though. Arguably it went on too long. I think maybe it should have just been one droid rather than two. But hey, we got the point, it was some cool action there. And it made for a thrilling finale, if one that didn't really satisfyingly end the story of the Boot of Boba Fett. But yeah. The structure has a problem, the way in which the show is laid out and the way in which the story is told is a really big problem. I feel like the flashback should have been introduced first, it should have been told in chronological order, it would have really further explained Boba Pet's motivations more, add in a couple of scenes that really define that as well, really hammer it home because it is very vague by the end of the season why he's doing it. And yeah, the stuff where it does end up transitioning to The Mandalorian arguably shouldn't have been here at all. By all means, bring Din Djarin in as a side character, but we don't need an entire episode or two where he goes, where he is the main character and we're seeing his journey instead of Boba's. Because that's just distracting. It's a great distraction and I loved it, but it does distract from what the actual main focus of the show should have been. And honestly, that's the biggest problem with this show. But yeah, ultimately, the Book of Boba Fett, full of problems, but it does have its fun moments, it does have its entertaining moments. I don't feel like I need to see Boba Fett anymore. We're going to see him more because this story isn't over. 
There are things with Cobb Van for character who I haven't mentioned, who I absolutely love because I love Timothy Oliphant. I'm interested to see where he goes. They're doing things with the mods. I hope they don't go too far with that. I hope they do more of like a Fennec Shand thing where they, yeah, he's modded, but we don't need to see or know about that really. But yeah, interested to see where that goes. Will we get another Book of Boba Fett season? Maybe. The reception of this has been a bit mixed and with recent Star Wars, when things are a bit mixed in the reception, they kind of cut things short. The Last Jedi, for example, Ryan Johnson's trilogy seemingly not happening anymore, but we don't know. And then Star Wars Resistance got a mixed reception, and that only lasted two seasons. So yeah, unknown if we will see more of the Book of Boba Fett. Maybe it will just continue in the Mandalorian Season 3, which is apparently coming out at the end of this year. Maybe we get in the next year. So yeah, it remains to be seen what the future is here. But we're going to see more of Boba Fett. The problem is Boba Fett now isn't as interesting as I wanted him to be. Isn't as interesting as I think a lot of people wanted him to be. I haven't actually said what I wanted Boba Fett to be. Did I want him to be the badass bounty hunter? I think that would have been the best approach. I think that would have been the coolest approach. But like I said, there's actually nothing saying that he was a badass bounty hunter. Unless you really dive into the comic books. But again, based on those original trilogy movies, Nothing there confirms that that is what Boba Fett was. That's kind of just people planting on their own thoughts and opinions on what this cool looking character was. So yeah, I don't think they've necessarily done anything wrong there. I just think they went in the direction that we weren't expecting. But yeah, Book of Boba Fett, I enjoyed it, but it has problems. I'm not sure if I would ever watch it again beyond the final few episodes, but we'll see. And tell me what you thought of the Book of Boba Fett in the comments down below. Like this video, share it with your friends to let other people know about it and of course subscribe to my channel, that is the most important thing. The more subscribers I get, the more content I can make, the easier I can promote my content. And of course follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well at the underscore Graham Burton. Until next time though, thanks for watching.